Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Final Cut Help. Today we've got a guest on the show, Robbie Carmen, And Robbie is a colorist as well as an expert in Apple Color. And he's going to be sharing some things with us today about really isolating where color correction occurs. That's right. So how does this work? Well, sometimes, Rich, there's you want to do secondary color correction, but some of the tools that are available for secondary color correction, namely vignettes, circles, squares, don't really do the job. So today, I want to just take a quick look at using user-defined shapes to perform a vignette that will then perform a secondary color correction with. Okay, so you could make a geometric shape then, per se? Correct. Okay. It could be any, sh any shape that we want. All right, let's see it. Okay, so here I am in uh, the secondaries room. That's the third tab over here at the top of the color interface. And I have a shot here that's just a building with a nice little sky here, but the sky looks kind of flat, doesn't look very punchy to me. I want to sort of beef that up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first enable this room, because remember, anytime that you have a secondary, you need to enable the room first for the, uh, the effect to take place. So I'm going to click Enable. And the idea of the secondary is that you're not color correcting the entire image, just Correct. part of it. Correct. Secondary correction performs correction on part of the image, where primary correction will perform it on the entire image. Okay. So I enable the secondary room, and I'm going to come down here to the middle of the room and check the vignette little radio button there to turn on my vignette. Now, you'll notice here in the previous tab that the default shape is a circle. And we can control the shape parameters down here right under the vignette checkbox right here, shape, and we can choose square or circle. Now, as I mentioned, for this case, because I have this weird shape of the building that sort of you know, goes in an L here, a square or a circle is not going to work. So instead of choosing one of these defaults, I'm going to actually choose user shape. Now, before I do this, what you're going to see happen, and don't be alarmed, is that I'm going to automatically jump into the geometries room, which is another tab here at the top of the color interface. So I'm going to choose user shape. And color jumps me right to the geometries room, and then specifically to the shapes tab at the bottom of that room. So now I'm ready to make my user defined shape. Now, this works pretty straightforward. You use basically a pen tool. You've got splines if you want them. Correct. Over here on the right-hand side of the geometries room, when we're on the Shapes tab, I have different controls for softness, shape name, and that kind of stuff. As well, at the bottom of the room, I can control what type of shape it's going to be, either B-spline or polygon shape. And splines are more useful when you have curves, polygons, more for straight lines? Correct. Okay. Correct. So in this case, because I have pretty straight lines, as you mentioned, going around the building here, I'm going to actually switch this from a B-spline, which you mentioned is very useful for shapes, to a polygon, which is very useful for sort of hard edges. Okay. So once I switch to Polygon here, the first thing I'm going to do is just click anywhere here in the, uh, the image here. I'm going to click right here at the bottom. And you'll notice that adds a new point. Now, sometimes, if you want to be very accurate, this default size window is hard to see everything that's going on. So if I right click and hold my mouse button down and drag, I can zoom in and out of the image. And then if I hold my middle mouse button down and drag, I can pan around the image. And this will just allow you to get a much tighter uh, shape on the side of the building here. And so for people who are just using the standard Apple mouse, that button you normally use to bring up expose is the third button. That's a very good point that you make, you make, Rich, is that yes, we do have to go into our system preferences and then the mouse preference to be able to change what our buttons are doing. Okay. But the default Apple mouse that came with your tower that's, will work. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So now that I made my first point, let's go ahead and just quickly make some additional points here. And I'm going to roughly trace the edges of the side of the building here, something like this. And come over here, make a couple more points. Now, the thing about this when you're doing these user-defined shapes is you want to try to be as tight to the shape as possible. Because if you do leave gap in there, you'll, your secondary correction is going to show through. So let me just very quickly finish making the shape. Can you feather the edges on the shape a little yeah, bit? Yeah, and we're going to do that in just one second. So I want to select the whole sky so I can just come out here and just choose some random points out here. And a little, uh, little known keyboard shortcut that helps once you're very zoomed in like this, kind of you know, don't want to have to drag around a lot, simply hitting F on the keyboard, and the way I remember that is F for fit, will get the, uh, the screen back into 100% view. So I'll come down here and I'll close the shape. Now to close the shape, I simply click on the first point. And now the shape is closed. A couple on-screen things to let me know that the shape is closed. Right here, where I had a yellow box before, I now have a green box indicating that the shape is closed and it's ready to go. Right. So now that I've made the shape, as you mentioned before, Rich, I can do some softness. I can add some softness to the edges. And when I do that, just by using my middle mouse button and scrolling up and down, you'll notice that I get three lines, actually, inner softness and outer softness. 
And I can control those inner and outer softness points independently of the actual shape. But for our example today, we'll just leave the default points the way they are. Now, when you're working with high definition footage, do you tend to use a higher softness value than maybe a smaller standard def clip? It really depends what the subject matter is. If I was doing a vignette on, say, somebody's face, where I didn't, I wanted to sort of soften it a lot so the effect wasn't very noticeable, yes, then I'd probably add a lot of softness. But on something like this where I have very hard edges to the side of the building, I probably want to do a minimal amount of softness so I don't get that sort of blurred on the edges. Okay. So we'll do a little bit of blur, uh, maybe something like that. And then this is the big thing about uh, uh, user-defined shapes. You've made the shape, but that doesn't do you any good until you hit this attach button. Okay. If you notice in the upper right-hand corner, it tells you your current secondary, and the current secondary is one. That's the secondary that I was using on this clip before I jumped into the geometries room. So to add this user-defined shape to that secondary, I simply need to click Attach. Okay, I'm attached, I'm ready to go, and if I click back into the secondaries room, you'll now notice I've applied the shape, and if actually if you take a very close look around the edges of the building here, you can actually see the user-defined shape as sort of this white line. Okay. So now that I have the shape there, let's actually do the correction. I'm going to uh, do the secondary correction by using the color balance controls here at the top of the room. As I mentioned when we first started talking, I want to sort of treat this sky. And I think it's kind of cool to sort of go with something a little surreal. So what I'm going to do is come into the highlight color balance control and take the target here and let's drag towards, oh, I don't know, red or yellow or something like that. Now, you're thinking to yourself, huh, I didn't see anything happen. Right. Well, you have to remember these three buttons here on the side of the previews tab. The first button, the one that's red, green, and blue, will show you your final image. The one that is gray, green, and gray will show you a desaturated preview. And what that means is that everything that you have selected, in this case the sky, is saturated. Everything else is desaturated. And you can see that up here right. in the view. And then if you click the uh, button that's black, white, and black, you'll see your mat only. And so in this case, the area that's white is what I have selected, and the black is what I don't have selected. Right. Okay. And, and so this gives you a clear preview of where the secondary color correction is going to occur. That's correct. Okay. okay. So to be able to see this correction that I just did by moving the highlight color balance control, I simply need to click on the final view, the one that's red, green, and blue. And now I have this crazy surreal looking image. Mm -hmm. We could back that off a little bit. Or maybe when we want to go something a little bit more natural, get a little bit more highlighted in blue. Sure. Now, if you find yourself having made a mistake with the shape of the uh, user-defined shape, you can always jump back into the geometries room and simply click on your points, either your actual mass shape or your softness shape, and adjust them to fit more appropriately to what you're trying to define. And of course, if the subject was moving, you could keyframe that to move. You could keyframe it, or you could even better yet, you could track it. Okay, great. Well, this is very useful. Robbie, thanks for joining us. Thank you. People want to find out more. You've got more training on color available online? I do. Uh, I have a title on lynda.com uh, called Color Essentials Training. And uh, yeah, users can go to that and check it out. We have about six and a half hours of training there. Great. Glad to have Robbie here. And of course, be sure to check out Creative Cows Forum on Color, where you can get lots of tech support and ask your questions. Thanks for joining us.